I just wanted to show you a couple things. On that lateral, we spoke of, of how it's important to get a film on the PA that shows the depth of the trocars at the base of the pedicle. And that's what you see on your right, right now. And so, again, in the surgical field, how we line it up, and um, we made some introductions here. Talon is our, uh, our, our x-ray tech. And what we do is on the skin, we line up first where our entry point will be. And Talon's gonna shoot a PA view. So you can see the four trocars are in on the left and I'm on the right. Now because I'm projecting over the skin, I can basically bring, I usually bring a spinal needle down to localize the trajectory to, in this situation, the two o'clock position on the pedicle. Talon's gonna shoot. Okay, I'm a little high. And again, I typically would use a beveled trocar so that I can steer it. And, and before we shoot another shot, I'll take the other trocar, the other trocar, do you have another trocar? And I'll, I'll basically set up two or three trocars now so that I'm limiting the amount of fluoro that we're delivering in each, um, each situation. Do we have other trocars? Yeah, he's grabbing them. Yep, he's grabbing them. And again, typically what we do ahead of time is we go through with the team a whole, uh, a whole list of, of steps that we're going to do in the procedure. And that includes the primary pause, positioning, localization pedicles, placement of guide wires, tr uh, the screws over, tro over the guide wires, and Talon's gonna shoot now because we have two trocars in. And that's how we reduce our total amount of fluoro. Again, the key is getting in at two o'clock. Talon's gonna shoot again. Good, about two o'clock. I usually use a small mallet, not a total hip beater like this, but um, it's striker, it's okay, I'm used to it from my neighborhood. And we draw the, uh, the uh, trocars, go ahead Talon, towards the medial wall of the pedicle. And again, recognizing that we're going very lateral to medial to create more of a, um, of a triangulation of the implants so that they can't rotate. Uh, based on, on their position. And we're also out of the facet joint. So Talon's gonna shoot again. And again, here at, at uh, the uh, top level, which is T11, you can see we're just at the medial wall. At T12, which interestingly has a fracture, you'll see, we're gonna bring that down to the medial wall. Shot there. Good, we're at the medial wall. Now we'll flip and get a lateral Talon. You have a guide wire. Yeah, they're right over. Mark, yeah. what's that brown uh, uh, rectangle around your needles there? Um, this is, is actually a navigation setup for Stryker, and I didn't use it because I, I'd say 90% of us don't have access to navigation. And in a case like this, it would add a lot of fluoro exposure to the patient to do an acquisition, where, whereas this is an operation that can be done with about 20 seconds of fluoro. So when we go up to the top, Talon, Talon's gonna shoot up towards 11, 12. You can see that we're just at the back of the pedicle for both of those uh, needle projections. And so now you can either drive these in further or you can uh, go ahead and put in the guide wire. One very important thing I do at this point is I take um, normal saline in a syringe and I put normal saline down the, the trocar. And the reason is we're right above the heart, and of course if you put gel foam thrombin down, that's a fatty emulsification, that'll cause a marrow embolization. So normally I put normal saline, so you get kind of like that cold weather foam that you get in Minnesota in your car, and that prevents embolization, whereas if you put in gel foam thrombin, you create a marrow emboliz embolization. I basically hold the wire while we do this. Fellows average uh, one wire pull out per every six uh, pedicles. Don't be too upset about that. Again, normal saline, and then put in the wire. So that's the sequence we do. I usually advance it under control about a centimeter and a half. Talon will shoot and show you how deep that wire is now. You see the wires are wholly within the body, and you can see due to the osteoporosis here, it's very easy to put this through the front of the body. 
<laughs> it's not going right now. The wires are flexible. But um, nevertheless, uh, it, it's a little ominous when people do that. I'd suggest not doing that. And that's, that's active wire management. And you can see that the length of the wires are the same here. So you're monitoring that actively through your whole operation. Now I made a small incision here. Normally I would use dilators with whatever implant system I used. And I've done this with about six different implant systems. And uh, at this point, I do not tap. And the reason I don't tap, could I have one of the screws? Yes, sir. Is, um, got it. Is that we want to avoid tearing up more tissue. And if you look at the purchase, your purchase is better if you don't tap than if you tap. Now, this company has extremely flexible wires. I wouldn't normally gouge a skin like that. See, so one has to be very, very conscious that you're uh, or, or orthogonal to your, your wire. So again, I, I don't usually shoot a shot this way. I usually do this on uh, visual memory, but Talon shoot here to show the difference. See how we're, we're off actually a little bit. This is where we need to be, shot there. And so now we're collinear with the wire because if you're more than 10 or 15 degrees off, you will incarcerate the wire as, as you pass it. So as I'm doing this, my assistant's going to flip the, troke, the wires in and, and we're going to show a rod passage here really quick. The other thing is as you seat the screws, right now you've got the wire, you're well through the pedicle, pull this out so you don't advance it through. And you seat these a little bit by feel. And again, care is that if you're mentoring, uh, they may, your, your assistant may not know that depth. And again, right there is where it starts to bind on the tissues. You turn your channels so that they're longitudinal, and then you've, uh, you've advanced things. So right now we're going to put the, the screws over the wires on the other side quickly so that I can show you a, uh, a rod passage. Um, again, we pre... Uh, trocard those pedicles, just to make that a little quicker. Again, managing the wire length up here, and we're going to be a little lower at L1 and 2 than above. And um, we'll get those screws in. Yeah, we do work around the, the uh, floral machine, but right now we've done about six shots so far. Six shots. And that's, that's the goal, is to, the whole time we're working, minimize the shots. Because we can step back six feet while every shot's going on and reduce our radiation exposure 90% by being back six feet. If you can get to 12 feet, you reduce it down to about one or 2%. So I usually shoot for uh, 12 feet personally. Um, but again, with the trocar placement, sometimes you have to hold the trocar. We have one more guide wire here, or should we pull it out of the other side? Yep, I'm gonna borrow it from the other side. You didn't see that. That was the one and six pull out. And again, you can see your guide wires are pretty much the same length up top and bottom, which is expected. We got some screws to pop in. Should I pull this one out? I'm gonna borrow from one side to put in the other. Again, these, this screw interface, you can see is non-locked. And this is a problem with the implant systems because this allows the toggle that binds the wires. So most of the implant systems have gone with a screwdriver that directly connects into the shaft. But that's a, a transition that the companies have been making over the last uh, pretty much 24 months since that problem was uh, recognized. And unfortunately it caused some, um, a lot of screw pullouts and some wire advancements that a number of the major companies have now uh, adapted to. So it's good, it's good to be involved in product development so you can get the right thing for your patients. So, guys, the system, can you help me unlock that? Sure. Got one more screw here to, or two more to put in. Now this is a uh, open tab system. And so that issue of, um, of fascial incarceration is greater with the open tab systems. Uh, I recognize so that the open tab systems have an immense advantage from the standpoint of, of rod placement for the learner. Um, but again, you have to be mindful of that fascial issue. So again, three, uh, three key points. Um, again, how we lined up at 10 and two the fact that we want to uh, pass, the, um, pass the guide wires and manage their length the whole time. Do you have a needle driver? You want to be aligned up to the screw so you don't incarcerate and drive the uh, wire. And uh, the fourth little caveat, if we can get it in here, Jens, is the rod passage uh, maneuver. 
So while we're getting those last screws in, can you disconnect this? If you can disconnect this, that'd be great. When you pass the rod, you basically it's much easier to pass a curved rod because you can use the curve to steer than a straight rod. And again, most of the patients we want to adapt, like here to thoracolumbar lumbar kyphosis, we basically want to set it up so that we're not pulling out the screws as we reduce them to the rod. And so I typically will place a little bit of lordosis and a little bit of kyphosis, even though we're only passing from uh, uh, T10 down to L2. And again, if we come up here, unfortunately, my, if we can put it down in the patient, see how all these tabs are lined up, that helps us, but you have to recognize that we're above the fascia. So what we set it up is our final rod position. This is going to be T10, this is going to be L2, or T11, excuse me. And what we'll do is we'll start this this way so that we can basically get below the fascia. We rolled it over. We went down through the second screw. And then we can turn it to get it to track down to the other screws. And then you can steer it right and left this way to advance it through those trocars. Okay, now, one thing here, Talon's gonna shoot a lateral. Yep, there you go. So we passed it through, and it usually passes about that quick. We're pretty much seated here, and we're subfascial. We're subfascial here, but I'm gonna show you something as we reduce. If this happens to dimple as you're uh, reducing your rod, then you know, can, hopefully I can see right here, that you're basically dimpling the fascia down and you need to release it. Now I cheated, I put it above the fascia so we would dimple right there, see that? And that's the dimpling. So if you have that, you just take a set of, of scissors and you release the fascia from this screw down to here. Okay, we have scissors. Or I'll pretend this will be, oh yeah, 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 we got scissors. So you can go right along here and you can release the fascia to get rid of that dimple right along the rod. Just like doing a, a compartment syndrome. Okay, so we got that reduced now. These will go down. You have some more screws. And again, it's just something to be mindful every case, every time. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And again, here we've only done two of the screws, but it's okay, we no longer have a dimple. Okay. Talon shot there. Good, so the rod's reduced, we're subfascial, and we can uh, then kind of uh, complete. I usually just uh, will close these with a monocryl and a nylon, because it's typically trauma or tumor. Mm -hmm.